can't do anything without integrity. If a thing doesn't hold together, it just disintegrates in your hand. And it's the same with spiritual matters. There has to be integrity. It's the foundation of creation. Something holding together. Upon this, we can have life. And from life springs joy. Joy comes in the fullness of life, the shalom, absolute satisfaction of life. which is that of heaven, eternal life. From this fullness of the shalom is expressed all love and kindness. And that is spoken out in truth and the knowledge of God. And all of the years, in this is found communion, fellowship with God, his fellowship with us, his incredible, loving, fatherly relationship. To us. And such yields a transcendence which is beyond articulation. I cannot speak of it with any comprehension of its fullness, only that it is the transcendence. Let us review. Let us review it now, more from your point of view than from God's. The foundation the very substance on which all is built is hope. From that hope there is life, in the sense that hope gives us the drive to create, to achieve, to become, to do. Hope affords life. And life affords the opportunity to experience the shalom of God, the peace, the plenty, his astonishing provision. Here in the transitory, as we see it, creation, time, space and matter, dimensions. And from this fullness we are able to love to care for all all that God is and all that God values all that God has made all that is and ever could be an infinite love. In our heart, in us. And of course, we spontaneously speak of such. We speak it out. We 
in gratitude, thankfulness, praise. Worship if you like. We give glory to God. We glorify. Because that glory is in us, you see. We have been glorified by his love and care, life itself, hope, all. And from such praise and worship and love, we find we have entered into communion with God. We receive his wisdom, his words. We see him face to face. And from that enlightenment, we transcend into the heavens life eternal. Thank you, Heavenly Father, wonderful one, dearest friend. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Let me add that the trust is somewhere in the Shalom, in the experiencing of his gift and fullness and gift to us. There's a growing trust. That we find we have. It is that trust that's expressed as love. can't love without trust, you see. It's a bit like the hope is foundational to action and life. Trust is the foundation to love. And it comes from appreciating, experiencing the fullness of his kindness, the shalom. And um, many are deprived of that realization. They are preoccupied with all that's wrong, and they need to have put right. That's why they have to pray, you see because they are preoccupied with what is lacking, rather than being fully conscious of all that's been provided, life itself, in this astonishing universe, and the thoughts we have, the life we have. So trust is to love as hope is to life. Let me pause there a sec. Yes, I've got it. It's the same as praise and thanks. Is the, is to communion, fellowship with God and the host of heaven. So hope is the gateway to life. Trust is the gateway to loving. And gratitude, praise, thanks, is the gateway to communion. God has it that this universe of the transitory, which is a not the same as saying this transitory universe, 
This universe of the transitory gives birth to the transcendence. into life eternal, heaven is life. That's sort of Garden of Eden state. Something that we taste somewhere back in childhood And it's somewhere in that statement, except you receive the kingdom as a child, a little child. You cannot enter into it. You need to have experienced To know it, you see, and to know means you can distinguish it from all else. In this universe, time, space and matter, this universe of the transitory enables you to taste of the alternative. and thereby know the genuine. You can recognize evil instantly, provided you know in your heart the good. You must have received it at some point. which I mean you must have experienced good so that again when you see that which is not good you notice it immediately and uh, defend yourself against it and take avoidance action so this life affords us into life eternal. Thank you, Heavenly Father. How wonderful. Love you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Do you see, it's this necessity that's planted in the woman, in the mother. This necessity that her child must have. And she will defend that tooth and nail for the female of the species is more deadly than the male. Because she's motivated by this tremendous essential that the child, her child, has that glimpse of the perfect, the complete, the eternal, the shalom, the loving kindness of the divine, of our God, our heavenly Father, that her child must be embraced in that experience. Else how will they ever graduate to the kingdom of heaven, life eternal? So she uses the chaos. She is the chaos. That demands that this need be met. God help anyone that gets in the way of her. 
she would tear them to pieces. Thank God for that. Do you see she expresses the tenacity of God and his creation as regards his intention that you come to the fullness of glory in heaven, life eternal. In the riches that he experiences. So men find that almost impossible to grasp. Their women, their wives, their sweethearts are a bewilderment to them because they just see her as the provider of all beauty and loveliness and goodness in their life. And then you find that she will sacrifice it all for your children. Her children. And she is so fierce in that regard that you may wonder if they're your children at all. <laughs> You see, your devotion was to caring for her. And since she wants children, they're important to her. Wow. Mm. Mm, my devotion is to caring for children as well, of course. What does she want for them? Well, she wants a home. Mm. Oh, I can do that. That's good. I'm needed here. I can provide something that she values. And I receive her loveliness that I value, her care. Of course, you find her care might be a bit scant when uh, she's preoccupied with caring for the children. But, well, that's all right. She's been good to me. Now's my opportunity to show how much I appreciated her. For how much I appreciated all her love and care and kindness and the joy and beauty that she brought into my life. Men are intensely loyal. Women have to be told to love their husbands. Now hang on, let's get this right. Now women have to be told to obey their husband. Men are told to love their wives because, well, it's not a command. They find that that's something that they do quite naturally. Women have to be told to obey their husbands. Well, that's not a command. Men can be very dominant at times. <laughs> Hopefully not brutally so. The whole thing seems a bit dodgy to us at times. Then the whole of um, life in this universe is um, packed with uncertainty. For we are all something absolutely wonderful in the making. And God hasn't finished with us yet. That's why we're still here. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Just love you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. My dad was the epitome of integrity from my point of view. 
not a religious man at all, very empty in fact, but an amazing reliability, consistency, security. I was scared of him, but um, when he was enlisted to defend my case in the primary school, when he goes up there with mum and basically sorts the headmaster out, that's the end of the matter. <laughs> Absolutely. Nightmare to Dad. Absolute angel of goodness to me. The home was tempestuous, to say the least. And, um, well, worrying and frightening for a kid. Um, only child. Affluent, but um, very troublesome. Full of stress and anger. Discord. In short, an excellent um, start to understanding and entering into life eternal. A view of materialism that doubted its validity. Almost to the root of it experience of seeing and knowing both integrity and love. That was proof against all counterfeit. In a sense, I'm overstating it, aren't I? But you know what I mean. And an experience of the chaos of living and stress and discord and anger that gave you a longing for the solutions to life. The only solution is, of course, life eternal in the goodness of heaven, in the glory and presence of God and all that love him. Your God, of course. I don't mean someone else's God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And thank you again, Father, for the way these recordings just come. How each one develops. Fantastic, Lord. I, I reflect upon the notion that all thoughts are really of you. We just have to knock and ask to open up the riches of your understanding, your guidance, your leading, your wisdom. It just seems to be given to us by persistently, wow, well, Talking with you, with a purpose to bless anyone who might overhear or join the conversation. What a joy. <laughs> oh.
Thank you, Heavenly Father.